um, it's going to let the last few people in. So just going on to the next slide. And if you wouldn't mind continuing to admit people um, just over the next minute or so, well, I'm yeah. just explaining. Thank you. Um, so uh, the, the event this evening is just to discuss our math scheme of work, which we call Maths Masters. Um, but just before we begin, I'm just going to go over a little bit of housekeeping. So I think I've muted all your microphones anyway, um, but it's up to you whether you keep your video on or off. If you do want to say something, um, you can put something in the chat box um, or you can raise your hand or something like that. We'll try to keep an eye on it um, as we go along as well. Um, you can use the chat to um, ask any questions. We'll address all of those at the end. And the, the recording and the slides will be emailed out to everyone. It takes me a few days because the recording is usually quite a big uh, MP4 file and it takes my tiny Mac book about two days to download it. So it'll probably be Monday at this stage, but I will email it out to you all um, if you want to watch it at a later date. So let's get started. Oh, hang on, I forgot to say. So um, lady you can see, I don't know if she's above or below me, is uh, my colleague Anne Helsby. She's been working for us for about a year now, I think, or maybe more, Anne. Um, yeah, started yeah. off working on um, uh, kind of topic resources. I think you did some uh, work on the Titanic and some history topics. Yeah. And then Anne was uh, kind enough to volunteer to help create our math scheme. So Anne, do you want to say a few words about your teaching experience and background? Yeah, so um, I've probably been working in primary education for probably almost 20 years now. Sounds quite scary when I say it like that. Um, so yeah, I started off as a class teacher um, in reception, worked through year one and two and did year four as well. Um, and then I took a bit of time out and then I went back to work actually as a teaching assistant for a few years. Um, went back into year six, which was completely different. Um, so I've worked with all year groups now from reception right through to year six, kind of see where, where they start and also where they finished. Um, and then now I spend my time uh, making teaching resources, which I've done probably for about seven years now on and off across all different subjects, but a lot of maths resources. Yeah, and I must say, Anne, your grammar and spelling is excellent, which I'm very, very, very pleased about. Um, and as I don't know if you all know me, I'm Heather. Um, I was a teacher for over 10 years and I've been working for myself for the last nearly five years uh, on this website. And then before that, I um, worked for Twinkle for five years as the head of marketing as well. So quite a lot, lot of experience in this kind of uh, area. So let's go on to the first question. And I really hope someone answers this because otherwise it's going to be awkward. Um, <laughs> what's your biggest challenge when it comes to teaching maths? Just out, out of interest. So if you can just type into the chat box, um, I'd love to know what, uh, your, what you feel is your biggest challenge. I know personally, I think uh, some of it was time. Uh, some of it was trying to support everybody in the classroom at the same time. Um, often you get like 10 or 12 children with their hands up all at once and there's only one of you. Uh, Shelley's saying problem solving and reasoning. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you mean by that, I suppose, also like word problems, isn't it? So they understand the uh, the maths perhaps behind it, but they don't know what the question is asking them. They're often front and sat uh, papers as well, don't we? Alicia, mm. children remember previous learning to acknowledge. Yeah, well, this is part of the issue, isn't it? It's um, I often used to find I'd teach a unit for two weeks and then the next week it'd be like we'd never done it. <laughs> um, so which I suppose is, is actually telling you that didn't, children didn't, didn't really get it in the first place. But yeah, it's trying to link that learning, isn't it, um, to what they already know as well. So thank you for that. If you want to keep on typing anything in the chat box about that as so we go along, that'd be good. Um, so I'm just going to uh, introduce you a little bit to Maths Masters. Now I'm going to just exit the screen this so I can read a little bit from the bottom my printer wasn't working uh, just to help me just as a prompt really so maths masters is our pick up and go math scheme designed to save you time and help deepen deepen children's understanding of maths whilst working towards mastery through developing strong problem solving and reasoning skills uh, creating alongside math specialists it helps teachers develop to deliver high quality consistent maths teaching in an engaging and practical way all aligned to the national curriculum following a mastery approach each week, you'll find daily lessons and resources that are engaging and age appropriate, ensuring the math lessons not only provide curriculum coverage, but also help make help each individual pupil make progress. So uh, the idea, I suppose, is that we try to help make maths in nice to teach, easy to teach, help, help children make progress and also save you time, of course, as well, which is our main objective. All right, I'm just going to go back to uh, screen sharing mode. Hopefully it won't start from the beginning. No, it didn't. That's good. So I don't know, Anne, if you want to um, talk a bit about this slide, that'd be really, really yeah. good. Don't mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So why follow a mastery approach? Well, um, 
with maths mastery it's based on the idea that mastery of the subject of maths is achievable for all children um, regardless of their ability I'd say the only exception really is with your uh, special educational needs and disability children um, who might may need something completely different it may not be appropriate for them at all or it might need that they need it but in an adapted form or one-to-one -one support but other than that the idea is that all those abilities should be able to achieve mastery of maths um, and this approach facilitates whole class teaching so everyone's learning the same thing at the same time um, and the goal is that everybody in the class achieves that deep and sustainable learning and um, so the teaching's interactive um, the children take an active role in their learning. So there's kind of a back and forth between the teachers and the pupils, um, engaging the children throughout in the active learning. And it's based on these really small steps. So you can kind of really take the time to make sure that each child fully understands and has a deep knowledge of each concept. Um, and then that's kind of embedded through variation in kind of teacher modeling. So it might be like using um, different resources, different equipment, showing different methods of working out the answer. Um, and also in the pupil activity as well. So they'll be using a variety of different equipment, different methods um, to work through a particular concept. And at the same time, developing fluency in the recall of those like number facts, like your number bonds, um, times tables as they move further on. Um, to kind of really embed that deep knowledge and understanding. And it's also about making connections um, within mathematics. So it's kind of like the link between division and fractions and the links between kind of like place value and measures. So if they know that like 14 is greater than six, then when they come to do maths and they're weighing objects and they find, all right, well, that weighs 14 cubes and that weighs six cubes. Well, I know 14 is greater than six, so it must be heavier. So it's building up those connections as well. Um, and it also enables children um, to get that quick targeted intervention. So because you're doing such small steps and you're kind of constantly questioning them and discussing things with them, you can then pick up if somebody's not grasped something and go, right, well, they need a bit of intervention on that concept. And at the same time, those more able children aren't being held back. Um, once they've got that deep level understanding, they can then move on to develop those creative problem solving skills, which they really need when it comes to that reasoning. Um, so once they've grasped that, they can then move on, do some problem solving activities, start writing their own problems to solve um, and looking at different ways of working them out as well. So that's it for that Thank one. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm pretty sure every every person here has spotted the typo in the last last bullet point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway right I'm going to go on to the next slide <laughs> I just spotted that myself so th this is for you Anne as again if that's okay as well so yeah. this is really important isn't it this isn't something that when I was a teacher was really people really spoke about so um I, I don't know whether you can just explain yeah. it in a, in, a, in a brief way yeah um yeah so um the CPA approach is the concrete pictorial abstract approach so it's based on the idea that children often find maths really difficult um, because the abstract concepts involved um, and it's often referred to as a language that many people don't speak or understand. I think especially about like fractions, you know, when you start talking to children about fractions saying, well, a quarter's, you know, smaller than a half and that, well, we thought four was greater than two. How can that be? So the concrete pictorial abstract approach ensures that children have a deep understanding of the concept being taught. So often, especially like lower down the school, we'll start with things like the actual object. So if we're talking about addition and we're talking about how many fish we've caught and we've got six fish and three fish and how many we've got all together, and then moving on to representing that using your concrete apparatus, counters, cubes, using those to represent the problem. And then the next step is to move on to the pictorial representation. So drawing those counts and cubes using bar models or a part whole model or their own drawings to work it out. And the final step is then moving on to those abstract symbols. So then representing those problems with um, your addition symbol and your equal symbol um, to enhance the procedural fluency and the conceptual understanding. Thank you for that. Brilliant. Cool. Right. It's going to go into the next slide. So um, this is me then, really. So 
when you look at our maths page on the website, and I will actually go into this at the end of the session just to show you exactly how it works, we've actually split all of the lessons up into the small steps. Um, so they cover all of the objectives for each of the year groups. So at the moment, we've only got year one and two. And then I was speaking to Anne the other day, and we're going to start working on year three next. Um, so in the overviews, which I, again, I'll show you at the end, you can actually, because they're in Word, you're able to, ed to ed edit the, over the Word documents to move things around or perhaps to you know maybe spend more time on something if if your if your if the children in your class need that um so yeah i don't know Anne, if there's anything else i haven't mentioned about the small steps i don't think so no so they just it is really small and it just builds upon so say you do place value within 10 you know early on the and then later on you move on to that place value within 20. yeah so, yeah it's nice, isn't it? Because it just splits it up. Yeah. I, I think rather than trying to do 10 things in one hour, you're doing one thing in, in an hour rather than lots and lots of things. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I think with this mastery, it's kind of that idea of doing like one thing five ways. Yeah. Rather than trying to do, you know, oh, we've moved right, we've moved on now, we've got to do this yeah. now. And then they've not got it. And then later on, when you come back, like I said, when you come back to it, they're like, Oh, it's like like the, 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 it, nev gone. never done it which yeah. which which does show that they didn't didn't really get it in the first place yeah. I, I think there are times when children maybe have got it but still can't remember it but i think yeah. mostly that you know isn't the case yeah. brilliant right let's go on to the next slide so features of maths masters so as i said earlier the idea is that this is to save you time so you come onto the website you find the small step you're working on the week the block and you download and go um, as mentioned by Anne, it takes a CPA approach, as most people prefer now. Uh, it contains small steps that link links to the curriculum. So within the slides and some of the other resources, like the plans, for example, you can actually see the steps and links on there, as well as, as, well as the ready to pro progress criteria and the tough statements as well. So it's all linked together. Um, perfect for ECTs or experienced people as well, if you want some fresh ideas. Um, as mentioned, developed by Anne uh, as well with, you know, you in mind, basically. So we understand how people teach and what people want and what children relate to. So you, you can use it on its own or to, or to complement the existing scheme that you use. I actually thought about this earlier. And I think when we started the Maths Masters resources, I think we weren't, we were kind of thinking it was just going to be some slides and then a few worksheets and things. And I think it's kind of changed since then, hasn't it, Anne? Yeah, it's kind it's of become, <laughs> Yeah, it's become a scheme on its own. So I think that's less... Um, I, I, I think now you don't necessarily need to use an existing scheme. You can use this on its own. That's kind of the idea. We're working towards that as a scheme in its own right, rather than having to use other, lots of bits and bobs of other schemes as well. Um, and as mentioned, it contains everything you need. So it's got the lesson slides mentioned, the planning, the worksheets, activity cards, revision maps and assessments. So in theory, everything you would need for year one and two. And it's also good for intervention groups. I know that some people um, on this chat today, I think Tracy mentioned that, I know she's a TA and um, they use it in groups, uh, I think in their school as well. So definitely um, TAs could go along with the planning and maybe work with a small group or something and follow it and use the resources and things like that as well. So ah, I think I've covered everything there, have I, Anne? Yeah. Good. So um, what's included? So as I said at the end, I will show you some examples of the lesson plans and all the resources, but I don't know if you want to just briefly explain what, yeah. uh, how, how you've created these and how, how, how they're used in school, how they can be used. Yeah, so based on kind of those small steps then, so for each week there's like five days of lesson plans um, and they're basically the, there's like a page per day and, and it gives an outline of that week's teaching activity. It starts with like the national curriculum objectives and the vocabulary and then moves on to kind of an overview of the main teacher input. Um, it gives advice in there about any common misconceptions or typical errors to kind of watch out for or things to reinforce with the children, you know, just kind of watch out for this. Um, and then gives ideas for um, the independent activities, further activities, um, problem solving um, and challenges as well to with, uh, going along with that fluency and variation. Um, there's also resources on there, so I've tried to as well put down, you know, what sort of things you need. I know when I was teaching, it was always like, right, what do you need for today's lesson and making sure, you know, right, I've got the cubes, I've got the counters. Um, and it also comes with um, the web link. So if there's a worksheet um, or there's an activity card, you can just click on that web link and it'll take you straight to the site um, where you need to go. And there's also assessment questions as well, just to help you. Um, all editable though, so obviously you can tailor it to the needs of the children in your class. 
So if you like some of the assessment questions, great. But then if you think, no, yeah, I, I need to reword that or there's something else I want to add in. Um, and there's also a section for notes. So following that lesson, you think, right, there's something I want to go back over. You can edit it again. So it's ready then for the next day or the next week. Perfect. Thank you. And if, if, if your school has like their own um, sort of thing for planning, you can always copy and paste the, uh, the stuff onto that as well. So you can use it, you know, in that way, too, because it's in Word. So all very easy to um, change and, uh, you know, use for your class. So going on to the next one, then the whiteboard lesson presentations. Uh, Anne? Yep. Yeah. So, um, so these follow on directly from the lesson plan. So when you look at that um, main teacher input, that is then contained within those lesson slides. So they're all animated. Um, I tried to make them as engaging as possible. So just having kind of images and things that don't move, you know, the more they move, I tend to find, you know, the children are more engaged, um, but also editable again. So if the slides that, you know, you don't want or you want to change some of the numbers and things, then you can edit those. Um, but they're designed to be like a pick up and go. So you can just run with those. Um, at the beginning on the first slide, it always gives you the small steps, the national curriculum links, the ready to progress criteria and those TAF statements. So you can see exactly where it links into the curriculum and which objectives are being covered in the lesson. Um, as Heather said, can be used by teachers, teaching assistants and other support staff. And at the bottom of every slide, I've just tried to include a few teaching notes. So ideas of things, you know, you can say to the children or explain ideas for, you know, well, discuss this with your partner. Um, going over, especially at the beginning of each lesson, I've tried to get right, what do we already know? You know, what's their starting point? What do they already know about halves? Or, you know, when have we thought before about sharing into equal parts? Um, and it follows on with fluency and problem solving activities. So in every lesson presentation, there's always a your turn slide when it's kind of then handed over to the children, right, it's your turn now, right, can you have a go at this? And I've tried to design those so that they can be easily done on whiteboards um, and the children can discuss their answers with talk partners. Sometimes, depending on the topic, it's something more practical. So I've made suggestions wherever possible, you know, can they go and have a go at doing it practically? And, and then following that, there's always a challenge slide. So moving on to those problem solving or spotting an error, can you, you know, spot what he's done wrong with this? You know, how would you correct it? And then on the last slide um, is the assessment questions that are uh, shown in the lesson plan. Um, so you can then discuss those and then use those as your kind of assessment for learning and addressing any misconceptions and errors. Brilliant, thank you. Right, going to the next one now. And this is again about the worksheets and the cards as well. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, um, so the worksheets uh, are differentiated at two levels. We've aimed them at the uh, expected and the developing levels. Um, and they allow the children to practice the model learning on the lesson presentation. So wherever possible, um, when it's kind of the your turn or some of the early slides, the methods that have been modeled in the lesson, I've tried then to replicate those in the worksheet. So it's something the children are familiar with. They've already seen this done. Now it's their turn to have a go. Um, and they're all linked to. And then there's also activity cards. So this is kind of linking back to that concrete level. So these are more like using cubes or counters and um, perfect provision areas. Um, with the idea of you can print those, you can laminate them or you can put them in plastic pockets that can be reused. Um, and just getting that more practical side of things as well. And just that variation as well, you know, use it in different ways. Mm. Brilliant, thank you. Let's go on to the next slide now. Okay, and then uh, we've also got the revision mat. So at the end of each week, there's a revision mat um, and they've always got kind of the, the small steps that are covered or have been covered in that week. And there'll always be around four or five, just quick activities, just recapping on what, what's been covered during that week. Um, again, differentiated at the same level of, as the worksheets and the uh, activity cards. Um, and it, the aim is that you can then assess and consolidate that week's learning, um, but also ideal for, you know, a bit of homework, a bit of home learning or a morning task, or even to come back at a later date, think, oh, just check if they, you know, can remember that that we've done before. Um, quite handy to go back and, and do those as well. Brilliant, thank you. And the next one? 
Yeah, um, and then we've also got the end of your unit assessment. So um, when you look at the overviews, there's, there's the blocks for each area of maths. So at the end of each block, there's a maths assessment and um, very much kind of set out a bit like SATS papers. So quite clean and, you know, just to kind of prepare them for that, you know, those those SATS and how things are set out. Um, again, differentiate at two levels. So kind of at that developing level, things tend to be just scaffolded a bit more or, you know, there'll be a kind of few hints to help them along the way. Um, but both questions are exactly the same. So when it comes to the kind of the mark scheme at the end, you're not having to then go two different lots. Um, they're both the same questions and the same answers. Um, and there's normally around just kind of like 12 uh, questions or so just for them to work through. And then you can see, right, we've finished this block now, you know, what have they understood? Um, what can they do and perhaps what do we need to revisit or when I come back to doing that, you know, what do we need to look at again? Brilliant. Yeah. And they're in the, the style of SATs as well, just to help prep for the Kiki Sedge one SATs as well. So that they're in the same kind of format with the marks on the right hand side and the questions and everything as well, just to make that clear. So um, as Anne mentioned, I don't know if you can see on this slide here, there's a little creature in the top right hand corner. Um, and one of them, am I right in, in thinking, Anne, one of them, if it's if there's one, that's for developing, and if yeah. there's two, that's for expected. So that's how, how you would kind of pick out yeah. um, what is for whom. Yeah. Um, and as Anne mentioned, those at the developing level contain more scaffolding and visual prompts, and, and, they're, and obviously those questions are easier. And each of the plans and the presentation provide challenges and idea for further problems. So I feel like we have really covered this. We've thought about it a lot as well, just to make sure that it helps all children. I know there was a question earlier, maybe we can come back to at the end, regarding uh, SEND children as well, Anne. So maybe we can, mm -hmm. uh, um, as I say, when we've finished the session, have, have a little chat about that. Yeah. Um, and also, obviously, you can differentiate by having children work, working in groups, in small groups, perhaps, or in pairs, and, and also to, if, they, if they have to use uh, equipment, such as cubes, or if, they work, or if they can work things out in their head. Um, and as also mentioned, you can edit the plans and add notes as well, so you can always go back and recover the lessons later um, with, with the notes that you made. Uh, so I'm just going to, I hope that this works. I know that there's some things in the chat, but I, I'm just going to come back to those at the end, if that's okay. I think there's um, a couple from Shelley. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to, hopefully this will work. Uh, and I'm just going to show you, Anne, can you see my screen, which is a website now? Yeah. So um, I was actually thinking I should probably actually start from the math scheme homepage. Now, it's a little going to be a little bit slow to load because I'm obviously on um, a Zoom call and it's taking and my internet isn't very good at home. Um, but here you can actually download the overviews um, and the whole guide. So the whole guide is actually quite a long document, so I won't go over it now. But if you um, look at that, it sort of explains all the things that we've talked about during this event tonight. And you can also download the overviews there. And I think those are the word documents that we talked about earlier that you can then edit um, and change to suit your, your uh, class. If you go into um, the uh, each of the blocks, you will also be able to find like a briefer version, which I think we mentioned earlier that I've got the small steps on as well. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the uh, Key Stage 1, because obviously this is what we're talking about, the Key Stage 1 uh, resource at the moment. And then, as mentioned, you can then just browse by term. So, uh, for example, you might want to go into the summer term. Obviously, we're in that at the moment. I don't know whether everyone is on to that yet, because I know there's obviously had to, children are not, you know, maybe aren't at the stage you would expect them to be because of all the uh, loss of learning. Um, so then you've got the blocks. So you would then click on the, on the blocks. And then you would go into the week that you are on. So uh, we didn't do one for week one, and is that right? Because it was yeah. uh, consolidation. We didn't feel that it was uh, yeah. we needed to do it. So then just to go into uh, one of the sort of category pages here, so you can see all of the resources. So I was just saying to Anne the other day, somebody was out, I think it was Shelley was saying to me, I think it was Shelley actually, that it all looks a lot the same. So we're going to have a system where we've got different tags at the top. So you can click on lesson plan and then, um, slides and then worksheets so that you're not having to sort of browse through but there aren't there shouldn't be a load so there shouldn't be any more than about 10 in each of the each of the weeks so it shouldn't be that difficult but I appreciate that it's just um, just say it saves you even more time and the way I've been doing it is I've been uploading the presentations first and then the worksheets and then the activity cards and then the mats and then the assessments and the planning they, they come at the end so the planning should be the first thing that you see within that page um, and yeah, so this is one of the assessments. So I'm going to just download this and show it, show, sort of show it to you. 
um, as mentioned. I know it's quite big, but that's just the way that the downloads work. <laughs> um, so you can see this is based on one of the units that uh, we've prepared. Very SAP style, but we've made them nice and colourful and engaging as well. And we did have a request from someone um, in a special school who, because we were doing them in black and white because we're thinking that would be better for ink use, but then turned out people prefer them in colour. So we've now made them in colour. Um, I guess you can always print print, print them in uh, grayscale, can't you, if you yeah. want to. And then at the end, you've got the, uh, the answer scheme as well, just to help you. So then going on to um, a lesson plan, now I've downloaded this already. I've got a MacBook, so they don't, it doesn't particularly like Word. So I really hope that this opens up. Can you see that, Anne, a Word document? Yeah. Yay. So this is one of the Word documents. Uh, sorry, one of the planning, uh, some of the planning you can see. And you can see it's lay, laid out really clearly and nicely. Um, and I think we try to break it down so that you don't have to kind of like read too much, if you see what I mean, but there's enough there to sort of help you. Um, and then again, there's the, the notes that we mentioned. So that's what the planning looks like. And as mentioned, you can always copy and paste it into your planning format that you use, you, use, you use at your school. And you've got the assessment questions and things at the end. So hopefully that's useful to you. Um, oh, it's got the challenge bit there as well, which I think is quite nice for more able children. So now we're on to the, uh, no, we talked about that one. Ah, the mats. So as I mentioned, these brilliant for morning work or for the end of the week or even for home learning as well. Uh, and again, we have made this one in colour, even though the black and white, uh, it's black and white preview. So you can print these off. And as mentioned, there's the uh, more able version there and then the uh, developing version at the bottom. Um, it's the same sort of thing, really. And then the idea is that children would do that and you can help to assess, it will help you to assess their learning, their understanding of that week. Uh, let's go on to the next one. So the last presentation I've also downloaded. So this is a PowerPoint. And again, I hope it opens. Does that open? All right. Yeah. Anne. And you can see the notes here at the bottom that we've made or that Anne's made. Um, so that will help you with your, you know, to sort of teach the concept as well. If it's something you're not sure about, you haven't taught before, or maybe you're new to year one or whatever. Um, so you can use the notes um, or you can just do it in, uh, you know, in sort of screen share mode as you would normally. Um, and you can see that we've tried to make it, or Anne's tried to make it as engaging as possible. So things move and things sort of appear on the screen. I think they're really good anyway, that's my personal opinion. So that's uh, one of the PowerPoints. So there's, there should be at least two of those per week. And sometimes there's, there's five in a week. Um, but as time's gone on, we've realized that you don't, we've made them slightly longer, but less of them. And then obviously you can then split them into two. I think again, it was Shelley who gave us the feedback that she was, she was already doing that. She was splitting them down into um, maybe one, uh, one of the uh, PowerPoints into two or three lessons, depending on your class. Uh, so then we've got the, I've looked at this one already. This is just a different one, revision mat. Uh, then we've got the activity card. So I think this is the one that we had on the uh, slide actually. So again, is brilliant for, yeah, um, you know, wanting the children to do things on their own or, uh, working groups or something like, like that. Maybe you'd have a tough tray and have these out and have some counters and activities, loads of those as well. This is really important to us that children not just sat at desks with pencil and paper in hand, we're actually physically doing, uh, doing this stuff. That's the whole point of our, of our website. That's the sort of ethos behind it. And then what else have we got? Uh, I thought we had a worksheet, but I can't, maybe I haven't opened that one. Uh, I'll just open one quickly now. Let's find one that looks quite colorful as one here. So again, just wait for that to load. Uh, it's, it's in color and you've got two different versions of it. Uh, it's a shame that when it, it looks so big, obviously it is not, it's just an A4 sheet, but it's just <laughs> the way it shows on my screen. But again, you can print those out and then children can complete those in class as well, just to kind of like help them with their learning. Um, so I suppose the idea is that you would model the learning during the slides and then they would complete this on, on their own or in pairs. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything. I'm sure there was something else I was gonna show, but I can't remember what it was. It was something to do with the, oh well, never mind. Anne, can you remember anything? <laughs> I thought um... there was something else. I thought I talked about something else I was going to show. Oh, well, never mind. Not the overview. It will come yeah. to me. Overview? No? Uh, maybe. Maybe it was the maybe overview. The overview. Uh, see if I can, I'll go back and download it. I was, I was going to find the, um, the shortened versions of the overview, but I've taken them off here. 
uh, because I thought people would prefer the word version. Yeah. So I'll just open that up. So this is the word, the, sorry, the year two version. I hope that this works in my, on my Mac, I hope you can see it. Can everyone see that? The word document, Anne? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So as mentioned, this has got all the small steps on the national curriculum links, ready to progress criteria. And obviously you can move things around um, and it contains all of the uh, terms, the three terms on there um, as well. I'll tell you what else. I, do you know what else I was going to ask you, Anne? It was about mm -hmm. the um, pre preparation for SATs and how the scheme kind of takes into account the year two SATs. I know we talked about this uh, on Tuesday, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, because there is some kind of consolidation weeks built into the summer term to allow for that kind of gap of, you know, there's yeah. going to be a couple of weeks where they're not, you know, they're not doing the regular maths lessons. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's here, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Got it. Cool. Right. I'm going to stop my screen sharing now. Uh, although there isn't very much point because you can't see my video anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to look back over some of the, some of the questions. So um, I've got Emma asking about working with SEND and Neurotypical at the same time, which I suppose most people have uh, in most of the classrooms. Um, and I, I mean, I suppose it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because each child is so different. It is, um, yeah. But I think, I suppose, not typically you would have perhaps a T, TA modelling the learning with a, with some of the SEND children, perhaps. And if you've got any thoughts on how would you, how would you, you would use the resources perhaps in a small group? Yeah, it's just kind of adapting. I certainly am saying plenty of the of the practical, you know, using that concrete equipment, you know, giving them that to, you know, kind of reinforce and help them. Yeah. And spending a bit longer on that, you know, rather than moving on, you know, they might need to keep going at that concrete level for that bit longer. And yeah. then move on to the pictorial level because it, you know, it's possibly going to take them a bit longer to move between those steps than the other children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and things like peer working as well, you know having a you know another more able pupil with them that can then explain because often especially with the mastery the idea is that if they really master it they can then teach it to someone else so if you've got a more able people that can then explain it to them and often they'll kind of I don't know what it is with children but some say they just manage to explain something to another child in a way that we keep trying and they don't get it and another child yeah. will explain it to them and they grasp it so, that's so yeah. true that is that is really really true isn't it um and and, and also that saying isn't there that if you explain something if you teach some thing to someone it helps you to learn it yeah <laughs> as well so it kind of work it works for both doesn't it yeah uh thank thank you so shelly's saying in my school especially in my class which is year one in terms of problem solving reasoning i think shelly's mentioned this because this was something that a few people mentioned they struggled with mm. um i use a floor book um and now i know I know Shelley and I know that in her classroom she doesn't have enough tables so that's probably one of the reasons she does that um she doesn't have enough tables and chairs for all the children um we use the slides from the powerpoints that are, and she has them printed into a book oh cool okay and I put post-it notes around it with the children's responses okay so I, I'm sure Shelley won't mind speaking out um Shelley would you mind telling us a little bit more about that assuming that assuming that you're still with us I'm just going to wait for her to uh, to to come to come kind of alive. Um, I'll keep reading. I find it difficult sometimes to make sure that children are remembering. Having that deep knowledge, as I find that time is precious, they tend to forget, as there is lots to remember. That's so true. That is really, really true. Um, anyway, let's see what if Shelley decides to explain what's going on with those post-it notes. Uh, and she loves the your turn slides. Oh, that's good. Sometimes we use the activity cards as the next day morning activity or starter for the day's maths lesson for consolidation. So that's good because it's helping them to remember like that stickiness, isn't it? From the previous day with something that's really hands on and practical. Um, I was wondering if there's any chance of having key vocabulary word cards for maths displays for each topic. Yeah. Oh, man, that's such a good idea. We should definitely do that. Yes, we will do that. Um, Tracy, as an intervention by TAs, how long do you suggest each session sh should last? Obviously, each session can't run for an hour like a normal session. Would you recommend a minimum time session? Again, I think it depends on the children. I mean, I'm guessing, Tracy, what you're talking about is like something like, like a send group. Maybe even 15, 20 minutes would be sufficient mm -hmm. if you were teaching like something discreet. What do you think, yeah. Anne? I think, and especially you've got to kind of bear in mind how long the children maintain that level of concentration for yeah. as well. So I'd say, yeah, probably around 20 minutes, I would think, you know, especially if you've got quite a small group and you can give them that kind of one-to-one. -one. Yeah, definitely. 
I was yeah. just going to say when I was um, in the last school I was in, I worked, I did a Monday and a Tuesday because I didn't have my own class. They set me to work every second I was there. <laughs> so obviously a class teacher would, you know, the children would go in the morning and they'd be in for 10 minutes and go to assembly or whatever. But so during those times, I took a small maths group out and they only, I only had 10 minutes with them. Um, and we just use the whiteboards and things like that. And like you say, cubes and all that. this is this was prior to the, um, all the stuff that we're talking about now. But they did actually make a lot of progress, surprisingly, a lot of progress, more than the rest of the children. Um, so even a 10, even 10 minutes of something really focused. So we didn't talk about our breakfast or, you know, anything else. We were just really cracked on. Mm. Um, so even like, you know, even those small periods, which I think is probably why the morning starter activities that we've got on the site more recently that Anne also created <laughs> are so popular because I think when they're really fresh in the morning, you can do probably do longer as well, can't you? Whereas if it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, five yeah. minutes. <laughs> and I think as well, often it's quite good to like use, you know, like taking photographs. <laughs> yeah um you know to get record what you've done so they don't have to necessarily written it all down you yeah. can take some photos you've got that evidence then oh yeah this is what we did and you know you can show them then next time do you remember we did this and you've got that you know to refer back to as well yeah because obviously trying to write could be hold, holding them back doing the math sometimes especially when the younger yeah. it, it takes them so long you think well you know it's better to keep on with the practical and you know or doing it on the whiteboards yeah yeah I know um at my school we would do a um, photocopy of the whiteboard mm, yeah. just to, like as you just said to keep yeah. because they just save time rather than having to write the date out and all that stuff it just completely yeah. you know wasn't a good use of their time Shelley's raised a hand I don't see your video <laughs> Shelley but that could be can me. you hear me now yeah I can now <laughs> <laughs> me mic wasn't on and I don't know why <laughs> oh man it's, I, I think zoom has uh, something's changed with it it, just, it doesn't work because well as it used to do you, what, do you mind just explaining um i'm just gonna go back to your comment it was about the um post-it notes and the, and the yeah. response from the children i wasn't didn't quite understand that do you want to just explain it slightly more yeah yeah of course so in terms of like problem solving and reasoning in our school the uh, maths lead always wants us to like evidence the problem solving and reasoning and I always find it really really tricky to try and do it after every like in every single lesson for every child which is what they really wanted so I decided to maybe doing it like as a whole class so using the slides from the Mrs. activity the math slides there's always like a, um, a slide in there that is like a problem solving question so what I always do is I always screenshot shot that print it off put it in the floor book and then we talk about it all together as a class and then I, I take down yeah. all the children's responses ah, and then we might see. do it we might do it practically as well and I'll take photographs and then I put it in the floor book so I've got evidence of problem solving in my class oh that's so good that's really cool Shelley if you do that soon could you maybe take take a shot of it and oh yeah like, yeah yeah well, so, yeah, so, so we it. could just see it. it that'd be brilliant yeah I do it every week I usually try and have like on a Friday when we've like gone through like all oh, what we're doing that week yeah I usually spend quite a lot of time on a Friday in my maths lesson like doing problem solving skills really so I take right. like quite a few photos and things so I'll send you some photos oh perfect thanks cool um and then you said as well about using uh the cards for the for the next day for the morning um as yeah well, I think it's really cool I, li I like that yeah I, I, I think it's quite nice as well because because you know if you don't do it the same day it's quite nice for the next day to do it like especially as a morning starter or like just like at the start of your next maths lesson just for that consolidation to see if you've actually got what you did yesterday <laughs> yeah that's that is cool so so it so it sort of sticks then i, I guess yeah and then then, yeah. then then they can link the learning from yesterday to the yeah definitely. Learning. cool yeah um right so also shelly um yeah. <laughs> tracy was you were just saying about um if you're doing a group as a ta and i was saying maybe you would only do 10 minutes would you is that fair to say you know if you through the send group for example yeah yeah i would say a little and often with, yeah with send children is all it's all it's that like snappy snappy um like concrete like you were saying before like doing concrete activities with them making it into a game for them and yeah. things like that but like not spending ages because they, they do just switch off and I think yeah. it is like it's a little and often thing isn't it with SCN children I would say completely agree yeah definitely and Alicia now do you know what Alicia was one of our very first members just a fact for you there and here she is she's still with us Five years on almost, which is great. Um, so what in interventions would you say could support SATS prep? Well, we've got the assessments. 
that uh, were mentioned earlier and Anne has also created some SATS resources haven't you Anne yeah um I think we did some last I can't remember when we made them we've made a few different ones haven't we we've made some that are powerpoints right yeah I think so and they've got different questions on and you've taken them from the previous papers and didn't you pick out didn't you pick out some of the most difficult questions or something like that I mod yeah I modeled them entirely on the on the SATS paper so they kind of replicated exactly the content and just change you know the characters and the numbers and that sort of thing so yeah they should be exactly in line with with what the SATS are, are testing yeah so we've got some of we've got powerpoints that you could do as a whole class perhaps and then as Shelley was just saying you could even print them out and then talk about them as a group um and then We've also got some papers as well that we've again based on past uh, SATS papers, and we've actually got it's it's quite old right now and isn't in our current sort of branding and style, but it still works. We've got a really nice TAF booklet for maths for expected and ooh, maybe greater depth. Um, anyway, those are on the site as well. And if you want the link, if you me message me or um, if you ask me, I can link you. But uh, although they don't look as maybe pretty as our current resources, they're, they are still really, really good. So we've got the TAF stuff as well um, on the site. I'm just going to see if there's any more uh, questions. I hope that was the right answer, Alicia. I didn't know if you were meaning more about maybe group work. Um, I suppose it would be down to doing like the individual questions, as I say, maybe in a small group um, and going over them, um, you know, with each child and I suppose trying to unpick any problems they might have. I mean, some of the SATS questions are, are now are quite hard. Like my, uh, my my son's in year six and we've just been doing some today and I was actually quite shocked how difficult they, some of the questions were. So. Yeah, I think de definitely practicing questions is probably the way forward, isn't it? Yeah, and I think um, especially I that's right practicing um, on those reasoning questions, you know, yeah. like problem solving questions and talking through different methods of, of working out the answer and they can kind of pick out, right, what's best for them to do, you know, things like, you know, start with the concrete and go on to that pictorial and like what pictures can they draw to help them work it out? Because if they can visualise the question, it helps them so much more. You know, I know when I did year two, especially with the more able children, it's like, because we might be, they were, they were, oh, I don't want to draw anything. It makes me like I can't do it. Yeah. You know? like, no, no. If you draw it, then you can work out the answer. You know, they thought it was like a bit of a weakness, you know, yes, and it was yeah. like, you know, to get those drawings then they can really visualise, you know, those really tricky reasoning questions. Yeah, I think it's just going back to the fact that a lot of children know the maths. Mm. but they don't often they don't always know what is being asked of them and that is just practice isn't it I think yeah it's just that using and applying isn't it those skills yeah yeah it's so frustrating though isn't it as a teacher when you're marking a paper and you you just know that that child knows the, knows the answer and you just <laughs> haven't been able to pick out what it is that's been asked of them mm. um, which is is tough right brill okay I'm going to end the um event now because i don't think there's any more questions oh, this is, Alice has just said oh. my problem is my children always ask for the concrete in the tests um and i think i would kind of say to that like you know when using the pictorial say to them you know you can still draw like the counters and the cubes you know get into that habit of yeah they can't have them but you can still draw them you can still draw that bar model and draw the counters yeah. in and just kind of help them to to work around it yeah but i know what you mean I mean, really, in theory, they can draw where you know all over the paper. They can draw all over, they can yeah. Do whatever they want. I think children don't like to make a mess, do they? They maybe. I know. I think it's, it's always like keep it to. neat and tidy. But... Yes, but uh, you know, cross things out and things like that. It's all part mm. of it, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I suppose in some ways they could do with more paper um, rather than yeah. less. And especially when they do get marks for like the working out as well, if they don't have the right answer, if they've got the right, you know, if they've worked through it and they've nearly got there, you know, then they get some of those marks then. So it's so valuable yes. uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, okie doke. Oh, hang on. Just going off sub subjects. Got to ask a question about phonics, please. I shall I email you? Yes, Michelle, go ahead, please. To be honest with you, maths is not my forte. So I'm kind of like... I, uh, that, that's kind of why Anne's here <laughs> but phonics I know I know more about so yes I, I don't know if Michelle's just gone live she's going live yeah so Go um on. my um son has been told today that um his phonics is changing now he's doing I think it's called Wandle W -A oh yes I know that one yeah oh so I haven't looked at the website yet to see if you did it so that's what I was going to ask do you actually yeah so they so when the when the dfe changed when they decided to um 
ask schemes to validate to, sorry ask schemes to apply to be validated they um we're encouraging some of the English hubs to develop their own schemes. So that's what that one is. It's a scheme developed by an English hub. I don't know where it is, maybe in the Midlands or something, but it's, it's a completely different website with its own resources, its own lesson plans, its own training and approach, everything like that. So obviously we couldn't uh, cover any of uh, you know that content for that reason, but they follow, as far as I know, pretty much the same order of teaching that as you know, as we do, so okay. I don't know if you're talking about our sister site, Time for Phonics, or just the phonics resources that we've got on the website, but the phonics resources, well, we have, yeah, the phonics resources we have, we have on the website, as long as you're using this sort of in the same phase, so say your son was uh, doing phase two, you could still use our resources to support his learning that was, that was done by, um, by his school, if they're following that, that particular scheme. It is one, it's one of the major, it's one of the most popular uh, schemes at the moment okay lovely yeah if that helps that's great yep great thank you cool that's okay i'm really sad that my um video isn't working well i'm not that sad because i can't manage to get a hair appointment so i do look a bit strange um so, <laughs> so it isn't the worst thing ever um right i think that's it um i'm going to end the call um and as mentioned i will send this video uh and slides out to everyone as well to have a look at um in a few days since my mac has managed to cope with download thank you to everyone it's really